the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back, come on in, to Calvary. Oh, yeah. Oh, the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Just singing it to more people. Come on. Oh. It reaches to the high, yes, mountain. And it flows to the low west. Valley, oh yeah, oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never. Lose its power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Empowering Lives Ministries, our weekly Bible study. Amen. We're going to wait for our numbers to climb just a little bit. More than we are going to get started. God bless you, Minister Khadija. God bless you, Phaedra and Jamila. Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat in this virtual Bible study today. Amen. Start a watch party. Um, click like and share. Start a watch party. Let's share this word with as many people as we possibly, possibly can amen we're gonna wait a little while longer we see more people are on amen if you're on here put in the comments good evening hello god bless you praise the lord say something so i see that you're here amen thank you for sharing in the group minister khadija amen nine people are on already we're gonna get started and about five more minutes, we're just going to give people about a couple more minutes. Hey, Nina. Hey, Miss Cassandra. Hey, Steph. How are you? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We want you to like and share and start a watch party. Hey, sister, friend, Lucinda. God bless you. Thank you all for being on. So listen, we're going to go ahead and get started. It's 11 people here. Woo woo! We're getting started. So we're going to go ahead and have prayer. We thank God for each and every one that is on here today. Amen. It is a blessing to come to you all this evening. You all could be doing so many other things. You guys could be resting, getting ready for your day tomorrow, but we thank God. We want you to continue to click and share, start a watch party. Amen. So that we can let this word reach as many people 
as possible. Amen. We acknowledge everyone that's on here. We thank you for joining us. We're going to have prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless your name on the day for this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad. And now, Father, we ask that you touch each and every one that will be viewing this on elministries.church on our YouTube channel. Amen. Those that are viewing this on Facebook Live, God, we ask that you touch each and every one of them. God, we speak healing in the atmosphere. God, we speak healing over this stream. God, to those that are sick mentally, physically, spiritually, God, that they will be able to recover and be restored and redeemed in the name of Jesus. God, we come against this COVID-19, God, in the name of Jesus. We speak healing for those that have tested positive. God, those that are in the prison, God, we ask that you watch over Pastor O bed at East Jersey State, State Prison, God, my son Lance Fulton, all those that are in prison, God, that aren't getting the care that they would if they were outside prison gates. Lord, we ask that you cover them with the blood of Jesus. God, comfort families that have lost family members, God, that have lost close friends, that have lost members of their church. God, comfort them like only you can in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you. We thank you. We give you the glory and honor. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, we thank God. Hey, Nora, how you doing? Good evening. Hey, Bishop Clark. Hey, Natalie McDonald. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. I'm going to have to take my glasses off so I can see a little bit better with this computer. Tonight, what we want to talk about, we're going to kind of recap and piggyback off of the Sunday message where we talked about being in the right season but having wrong timing. So tonight, what we're going to talk about is understanding spiritual seasons. If you see me looking off, it's because I'm, I'm looking at my computer and I have all my notes. God bless you, um, Pastor Avery. Um, so I'm going to be looking on uh, my notes. So we're talking about understanding spiritual seasons. The same as it is natural, it is spiritual. The same way we would not do certain things in the winter, summer, spring, or fall um, in the natural, the same thing applies for our spiritual life. So what we're going to talk about tonight is how we understand the different seasons in our life that we go through. So tonight we're going to talk about the winter, spiritual winter. Uh, we're coming from Psalms 1, verses 3, Ecclesiastes 3, uh, verses 1 and 2. And then we're going to go over to Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. So we're talking about understanding spiritual seasons. So tonight we're going to talk about the winter season. Now, normally in the winter, it is a time of rest. Uh, animals such as bears, they go into hibernation. Um, plants normally go dormant for the winter and don't normally bloom. Um, it's a time when we gain an extra hour of sleep. Um, we get a little bit more rest in the winter. Um, spiritually wise though, spiritually on a spiritual note though, it's a time to reset and recharge. God bless you, uh, Pastor Coley. Um, it is a time, so when you're in your spiritual winter, it is a time to reset and it is a time to recharge. It is a time that we should be using to seek God even the more, um, to hear from him and to not only that, but to prepare for our next season. It is a time when we should not get so consumed in other activities because we do have this time of resting, because we do have this extra hour. We shouldn't be filling that time with a bunch of secular things, but we should be filling that time with more time of God. Uh, we should be preparing for the spring, which is the next season or whatever is the next season that God is going to have you in spiritually speaking. 
Um, it's a time that we draw closer to him and not be consumed with things that will have us to draw away from him. I'm going to say that again. During our spiritual winter, it is a time when we should be drawing closer to God and not consumed with other activities that will allow us to draw away from him. Um, sometimes we have too much time on our hands and we get a little antsy um, because uh, we, we want to implement what God has given us or what he's been speaking to us about. And, and, and we, we, we want to allow what God has been talking to us about to come to fruition when it's not the right season. Um, Sometimes, well, all the time, when you try to plant something in the wrong season, it won't grow the way it's supposed to grow. Why? Because it's out of season. You are not flourishing in God the way you should be because the idea that God gave you, that, that ministry that God gave you, just because it gave, he gave it to you in the winter doesn't mean that's the time you should be implementing it. He's given you that during this time of reset and this time of recharging your spiritual mind. So when that spring season comes, when that's the time when we're supposed to spring forth and that time of refreshing may be the time when he wants you to implement that idea. We don't plant vegetables in the winter. Because the weather is too cold. Um, the plants will ultimately die. Some of us have tried to plant ministries in the wrong season. And what happened? It died. The idea died. Why? Because you were out of season. Um, I don't know about you, but I've gotten vegetables or I've gotten certain um, um, fruits that were out of season and that taste horrible. There are certain vegetables that are summer vegetables. There, there are certain fruits and vegetables, if depending on the store and where they get them from, if they get them from a state where it is summer all year round, or they get it from a, a, a country where it's all year round sunshine, that fruit will be good. But if you get oranges from someplace like even Florida, when Florida does have a winter season, one time it got so cold that the crops froze. And so we have to be careful that we don't try to move ministries and operate in a season that God is not calling us to be in. Even, even, even naturally, when uh, you try to uh, 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 do things in a, in a season that it's not supposed to, um, you will get a reaction that you weren't looking for. Uh, so when we seek God, we must be able to seek God and able to recognize the spiritual seasons of our life. To have a good spring, we must have a successful winter. We must use our spiritual downtime wisely and rest and gather our thoughts so when the spring comes we can be refreshed we can be rejuvenated and we'll have our proper rest think about it this way when you don't rest properly on any given night the next morning you may be cranky your day may be off you might be a little discombobulated and it's the same thing spiritually when we don't take that time and that season that God has given us to rest, to take it easy, and we're still going and moving and moving like it's the time to bring forth or the time to pluck up. Matter of fact, if we go to, um, I'm jumping ahead of the scripture I wanted to go to, but if we go to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, tells us this. It says, 
Uh, if this is Solomon writing this beautiful poem that's reminding us and letting us know that God has a supreme plan for every event, every occasion in our life. God has a supreme plan for us. And what does he say in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 and 2? He says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. The second verse says, a time to plant and a time to pluck up which is planted. There is a time when God wants us to, he plants these ideas in our mind. He plants these ministries inside our earth, our, our body, our earth, our, this earth here, not the earth on the ground. I'm talking about this earth. He plants these, these times when he plants these seeds in our earth. And God has a season when he wants us to pluck he wants us to pluck up and, and to go forth in what he has given us. But if we're not careful and we pluck up things too quickly or too soon, we'll have a problem. Psalms 1 and 3 says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth, listen to this, bringeth forth his fruit when in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doth shall prosper when you are in the right season you will prosper when you are marching in step and in time with god everything he gave you will come to fruition Everything he gave you that he planted in you will come to fruition. Why? Because in Isaiah 55 and 10, it tells us for as much as the rain and the sun and snow rather comes down um, from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, maketh it bear and sprout. And furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now listen to this. The 11th verse says, So shall my word go forth out my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Let me tell you something. If God made you a promise, he doesn't give us empty promises. If God made us a promise, if God gave us a ministry, if God gave us a vision, it will not return work back to him void. If God gave you a word, it will not return back to him void. But we have to wait on him. We have to listen to him. The time that he has afforded us, this winter time that he has afforded us to rest in him so that we can be reset and recharged for our next season and we take advantage of that time. What he gave you will not return void. Why? Because he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, it's going to happen. Whatever he said it out to do, it's going to happen. So we have to keep in mind that the season that God has us in right now is the season that we're supposed to be in. So tonight we're talking about the spiritual winter because the same way that when rain comes down, when the snow comes down in the winter, it's for a reason. Because even though it's not time for my hostess or my daisies to come up in the winter, it still needs to be watered. That ground still needs that snow. And although in the winter we might not get a lot of rain, 
because during the winter, we should be getting snow. And when that snow absorbs in the ground, it is watering. It's watering that thing, that plant, those seeds in the ground that's supposed to come up in another season. So that idea, that ministry that God has given you, he's watering it during this downtime. He's watering you. How is he watering it? Through the word of God, through your pastor, through different ministries, through, through all these different ways. God is watering that seed that he planted inside of you. Why? So when your spring season comes, it shall spring forth. New things will spring bring forth new ideas God will give you, but he gives it to you for a particular season. So while you're in this winter season of your spiritual life, take this time to rest in him. Take this time to relax in him. Take this time to allow him to feed you. Take this time to allow you to grow in him. Because you can still grow in the winter. You're absolutely right, Lucinda. You might not think you're growing, but trust me, those roots are still growing. Why? Because they're still being fed. In the winter time, when the snow comes and the rain comes and it's watering those seeds and it's watering those plants that's going to come up in the springtime, they are still growing underground. And what happens is when that next season comes, they have grown to the part when to the point where now they're pushing up out of the dirt. They're pushing up out of the mulch. God wants to allow you to push up out of the dirt. But what you can't do is as soon as you see that little bud starting to push up, you ready to pluck it up. That because you're getting all these ideas just because you're you're starting to see things come together for what God has given to you. That's not the time for you to go full first and immerse totally into it. God is saying, you still got a little bit more growing to do. I still have some watering that I need to do for you before this comes all the way into fruition. So what you do is you relax in him. You let him continue to feed you. You don't allow your time to be occupied with so many things where you can't hear him, where you don't have the time to seek him. He always gives us that downtime. And like I talked about before in previous messages, what we do with our time and how we use our time, we have to use it wisely. The Bible talks about not using our time foolishly. So while God has given us this time, this winter time, to lean back and to just rest in him, allow that idea, that ministry that God gave you, allow it to grow, even though you don't think it's growing, even though you might think it's laying dormant. No, it's doing what it does in the winter season. If my hostess and my daisies outside started coming up in January, something's off. That means that something happened in that season of winter that should not have happened. Many times we've seen when we had this good weather in January, or we had these hot days. I remember one year, it was like January or February, and we had what you call unseasonable weather. That's weather that's out of season. And I remember my flowers started to bud. That was not a good thing, because when the seasonable weather came back, it went from 70, 80 degree weather all the way back down to 20 degree weather, 30 degree weather. And you know what happened? Those plants died. 
We have to be careful that what we do, that we remain in the season and the time in which God has allotted us to operate. Don't go trying to do things that we would do in the springtime during your winter. In the winter time, except you doing a polar bear plunge, you are not going to the beach to lay out on the beach and chill. Well, yeah, you will chill, but you're not going to the beach to lay out in the sunshine. You're not going to the beach in January and in December to go swimming. Why? Because that is out of season. So that is the time when you go and sit in your backyard with your chimney in the fire. Now, in the summertime, we're not sitting outside with our fire burning, outside fires burning. No, because that is out of season. So we have to be, be very careful because everything God gives us is not always for the current season that you are in. Remember that. I'm going to say that again. And you may want to type this in the comments. Everything God gives us is not for the current season we are in. And we must be careful, listen to this, not to allow our frustration. I want you to hear me clearly. Do not allow your frustration to get the best of us due to us being out of season. Nothing goes well when it's out of season. Don't let your frustration, because you know God spoke to you. You know God gave this to you. You know this was God telling you to do this. You know without a shadow of a doubt that you heard God and that you're not off and that you know that this is him. But it seems like things aren't quite coming together for it. So don't allow that frustration to make you charge God falsely and say, oh, that wasn't God speaking to me. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Or you start saying that couldn't have been God because it's not coming together. It's not formulating the way it should be. It's not, it's not coming together like I see it in my head. Why? Because it's not the right season. This is just the season to plan, not the season to implement. You have the season to plan, to orchestrate, to come together, to write down your ideas. Then there's the season to implement what you've been given. Every good implementation comes with the perfect plan. You plan first. You plan. When I know that the spring is coming and I have plants that I want to put out in my yard, I don't go in the winter to try to find them. As a matter of fact, the garden section of Homes, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart for outdoor plants, it's closed. Why? Because it's out of season. Now, when March starts to come around, you start to see the plants that we put in the ground now that we want to come up in June, July, August. You want your tomatoes to come up in July? Right now, you should be planting them because this is your season to plant. This is the season. And when August comes up, that will be the season for you to pluck those tomatoes off the vine. When September comes, that'll be the season for you to pluck your cabbage, pluck your squash, pluck those plants that you planted now for the end of the season, for the fall. That's right, Faye. That is absolutely right. The plan of God is perfect. It is perfect. He doesn't make no mistakes. He knows the plans that he had for us. That's why in Solomon, and he wrote that beautiful poem about seasons, Solomon tells us, listen, God has a sovereign plan for every occasion every event in our life. It's a time to get pregnant. And then there's a time to give birth. We don't get pregnant and give birth within the same month. Why? Because 
that baby has to grow inside of us. That baby has to develop. The fingers have to develop. The features have to develop. The internal organs have to develop. The limbs have to develop. And that's the same way it is when we're in our winter. Think of it as being pregnant where God is allowing that ministry, that baby to grow. He's allowing you to be fed. Why? Because you're resting in him. When you're pregnant, it comes a time when you got to rest, when you can't do all the same things that you used to do. You can't be on your feet all the time. You can't do bend over like you used to because now you need to be resting because it's about time for you to give birth to that baby. So it's natural and spiritual. You have to rest in order for God to speak and allow that birthing process to go the way it's supposed to go. Some of you are in your winter season and God is speaking to you. He's giving you some great ideas. He's giving you some ministry. I remember and I often tell this testimony. I remember when I was making the transition from a lay member to a pastor, um, from the evangelist to elder to pastor McGorder. And I remember when um, I was going through that season, my winter season, and that's the time when I tell you God was speaking to me. I mean, he was speaking. And let me tell you something. I was no longer working my overnight job at the crisis unit because I had gotten fired unjustifiably, but it was for my good. It seemed like every time God started speaking, it would be two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And then the Lord brought it back to my attention. If I was still working, I would have been, it wouldn't have been easy for me to hear him. Because two, three, four o'clock in the morning, I would have been on the crisis unit working. So God started isolating me. He started giving me message after message after message after message. He started showing me things. He started giving me more revelation of his word. He, I mean, places I wanted to go, I couldn't get to. Why? Because he had me in a winter season. Why? Because he wanted me to rest in him. He wanted to speak to me. He wanted me to hear from him. He wanted me to, to grow in him because during that time, I was growing. I was getting more of his word. I was researching more. I was doing more. I was thinking more. I, and those roots that was in this earth was growing during my winter. It was growing. And at first, I didn't understand. Why was he giving me all this? Why was all this happening? But then he began to speak and said, I got you in isolation. This is the time I need you to rest. This is the time I want to deal with you. I want to speak with you. So he allowed me to get fired from my job. During that time, my truck broke down. I could hardly get anywhere. Barely could get to church, believe it or not. I, I couldn't get nowhere. But God was letting me know, this is your spiritual winter. And do what you do in winter. Rest. So listen, this is our Bible study for tonight. I pray that you got something out of this. Praise the Lord to all those that came on the line. Hey, Sister Charlotte. Hey, Sister Latoya. God bless you. I see you. Hey, hey, um, Latonia. I see you on here. God bless you. Hey, Willie. 
Hey, Susan Taylor. Hey, Claudia, Sister Stephanie. God bless you all for tuning in. Hey, Daniel. Hey, one of my former students. God bless you. Sammy, one of my former students. God bless you all. Hey, Sister Carla down there in Florida. Sister Charlotte, Sister Faye Pittman. God bless you. Pastor Rochelle Whittington. God bless you. Hey, hey, Mrs. Lumpkin. Pastor Daryl Coley, thank you all for tuning in on tonight. God bless you. I hope this word blessed you. If it did, please start a watch party. Uh, share, share, share this video. We want to share this word. Amen. For some of us, you know, COVID-19 has blessed and opened up our viewing audience. Amen. Because I have more people, believe it or not, on my Facebook Live Bible study than I have in my brick and mortar building. And I thank God because um, Pastor Avery said something so poignant um, on his Bible study a little earlier. And he was just saying that, God, this is not about going back to church. This is about our increased relationship. This is about souls. This is about reaching people, people that we may not have reached had we still been in our brick and mortar buildings. So instead of complaining that we can't get to church and that the churches have not been open, thank God for the opportunity that God has afforded us to reach more people that we may not have reached. God knows where this video is going to go. If you share this video and then somebody on your timeline shares this video, this is why I make them public. Who knows who this video is going to touch? Who knows when someone views one of these videos that will make them say, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be born again? God, I surrender unto you. Father, I stretch my hands to you. No other help I know. So instead of us complaining about not being able to go back to church, how about we thank God that he, he's allowing us to reach souls all over the continent. People in Africa can see this. People in Europe can see this. People in Italy can see this. People all over the nation can see the videos that God is allowing us to stream. So let's give God glory. Let's thank him. Let's praise him for the opportunity. And for those of you who have decided to go back into the brick and mortar, listen, no shade. Thank God. I pray that God blesses your service. I pray that God blesses you all and that you remain safe. Hey, Joy. Hey, Sister Ivory. Hey, Ronnie Kersey. I pray that God allows you to re remain safe. If you decide to open up church on Sunday, I pray that you have the best God-filled, spirit-filled service ever. Although... And Paralyzed Ministries will not be reconvened at 6500 Madison Avenue. I look forward to going back. I really do. I look forward to it. But until then, meet us here Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for our Sunday morning manor. Sun, S-O-N, day morning manor. Meet us here at 11 o'clock. Listen, if you would like to donate, if you would like to give an offering to the church, if you would like to help us with our monthly expenses, amen, you can always go to our cash app at dollar sign EL Ministries 2014. You can go to our website, EL Ministries 2014.church and scroll down to the donation button. Um, or you can go to PayPal and you can do in Paralyzed Ministries 2014 is our email at gmail.com. And you can always donate there. You can set up monthly giving if you like um, so you don't have to worry about it. Amen. All donations are totally and truly welcomed. Amen. Listen, some of us are struggling right now and then some of us are not. But we thank God because where he gives you vision, he gives 
provision. Listen, this is my time for tonight. I thank you for tuning in. And I want you to always remember, you have hope. Hold on. Pain ends. God bless you. And I love you with the love of Christ. And we'll see you very soon. Remember, like and share. Like and share.